Good evening and welcome to the final quarter. I'm your host, Tom Ashenov. Fun-filled, action-packed night we have for you. I hope you're enjoying all your candy from Halloween, but time to enjoy some sports, too. Tonight, we have football semifinals, a rivalry renewed for the Syracuse Crunch. But first, Section 3 titles handed out in girls' soccer. First, we have CNS and Liverpool. You got to hand it to Brady right there. The ball boy missing out on trick-or-treating to work the sidelines. At least he got to be on TV. Good job, Brady. To the game itself. No score in the first half off the corner. Megan O'Neill kicks it in. one nothing. Liverpool, they're celebrating. Just a few minutes later, Araya Roses gets in front of everyone. The keeper, Julia Ritchie, comes way out. Roses takes advantage, scores, and does a little dance afterwards. That's the equalizer. It's 1-1, but O'Neal gets one more in the second half. Liverpool celebrates as the final seconds tick off the clock, winning the Class AA title 2-1. And I'm so happy for the seniors and obviously the, the young players that we have right now. It's just such great experience and I think they're just, you know, just so thrilled to win it. And, you know, we talked all week long. We believed in ourselves and, you know, to see it pay off, hard work, it's just it's tremendous. Battle. It was a battle going back and forth and trying to knock the ball on there and keeping it down there, wasting as much time as possible. <laughs> A raucous crowd on hand just a few feet away. The Class B title game between Top C, Lowville, and West Hill late in the first half. No score. A corner kick. Tatiana Mundi heads it in. She scores. 1-0 Warriors. Lowville would have a couple tries in the second half, but that one goal, the difference. West Hill is the Section 3 Class B champs. Moving on now, much has been made of the new rivalry between the Utica Comets and Syracuse Crunch, but for decades now, the Rochester Americans have been enemy number one for Syracuse. Tonight, the two squads, their first meeting of the season in the War Memorial. The Crunch getting into the Halloween spirit, a taco looks like, sweeping the ice there, and Batman even. Impressive tonight. But unfortunately, Rochester scores three goals in the game, including, that's a too easy breakaway there by Jerome Ludic. Rochester wins three to nothing. And speaking of those Utica Comets, CNY Central is your exclusive TV sponsor, the fast approaching Frozen Dome Classic on November 22nd in this Carrier Dome. Stay tuned for coverage all month long. That's all for the first half of the final quarter. Football is next, and one athlete did better than everybody else tonight. Find out if it was enough for an upset when we come back. Welcome back to the final quarter. I'm your host, Tom Eschen. Now it's time for football. Some teams playing tomorrow, but two of the best semifinal matchups were in Class C tonight. We begin with undefeated Herkimer and 4 c Jordan Elbridge. The Eagles with just one loss. Herkimer players holding up four fingers as they head into the fourth quarter with a tight five-point lead. And that lead does extend. As we move on here, Mitchell Scherer at the 30. Calls his own number, gets some great blocking from his teammates. No one touches him on the way to the end zone. His fifth touchdown of the night. And it'll put the magicians up 34 21. Herkimer wins it 42 27. Our team never lets up. We're, that's the team we are. We never let up. This team has great character. We knew it was going to be tough. They came back a little bit, and then we were like, all right, let's go. This is go time. So then we exploded. We went off as a team. Herkimer will now be competing for their fourth sectional title in a row next week. There's so many teams in Class C. That's the sixth seed out of eight teams. Utica Notre Dame only lost one game all year. General Brown learning that the hard way tonight. Kevin Warmack, unbelievable. 52 yards here. Jugglers up 18 to 6 after that. The game, the night belonged to Warmack. 398 yards rushing, eight touchdowns. They upset the two seed lines 46 40. They've got Herkimer in those finals. Let's head out to Chittenango where ESM takes on Whitesboro in the Section 3 semifinal. Spartans down by six in the first, but Brandon Breen, check out the arm, places that perfectly for Deshaun Gorman who takes off to make it a 55-yard touchdown pass. ESM would actually trail at one point in this game, but would come all the way back to win against Whitesboro. 38-35 was the final. In the rematch from last year's Class A title game, Indian River gets revenge with a comeback of their own. Down 6-0 at the half. The Warriors score 13 in the second half to knock off the Comets. It's Indian River and ESM in the Class A final. In Class D, Cato Meridian taking on Dolgeville. The Blue Devils looking good here tonight. Colin Weller calls his own number. A lot of calling of their own numbers. Picks up some great blocks downfield. That's his second touchdown of the day. Cato Meridian up 13-8 after the first from there. It's all, it's all Dolgeville. Reed Johnson takes the snap. Hands off on the end around to Johan Dorer. But he winds up and hits Daniel Fox for the score. They beat Cato 50-19. 
So Dollsville meets the winner of this matchup between Sandy Creek and Morrisville. Eaton Hamilton 7-3 Sandy Creek when the Comets open up the floodgates. Kyle Fayette hits Zach Halsey 24 yards for the touchdown. Moments later, it's Jared Baird. Nice tight set here, plowing in from a yard out. Sandy Creek wins 35-10. They're in the Section 3 Class D title game. Looking ahead to tomorrow, our Fast Track Game of the Week features Baldwinsville and Liverpool. The winner of this game going on to play the winner of Auburn and Henniger. But we bring in Kelly Cowan now. I like this matchup, Liverpool and Baldwinsville. It's a great one. Yeah. And we'll have to wait until Saturday for this week's Fast Track High School Game of the Week. But a matchup between longtime rivals Liverpool and Baldwinsville makes this one well worth that wait. Liverpool enters the class double-a semifinals a perfect eight and oh on the season and they'll come head to head with the boys of baldwinsville each team's offense led by a star running back two of the best in central new york beville's cameron skipworth and liverpool's jadicus scott each have put up 20 touchdowns this season i'm looking forward to that big time um Handing the ball to Jadikus and watching him do his thing and being on the sideline during the defense and watching us hopefully shut down Skipworth, who was a hell of a back. It's going to be a good week. I expect, uh, for lack of a better word, a barroom brawl. I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, you know, you've got two good teams squaring off. Uh, there's a bit of a rivalry there. You know, Liverpool and Baldwinsville are proximity to each other. And uh, I, I know the Liverpool kids are up for it. They have a great football team. And our kids are up for it. I think it's just going to be a great high school football game. <laughs> and Tom, that's going to be one of the best ground battles we've oh. seen all season the as backs. Beeville and Liverpool meet tomorrow at CNS High School, 3 p.m. That'll be fun. Kickoff. And we'll be there. Thank you so much for that. Kelly, tune in tomorrow for the weekend news. I'll have that game like I just mentioned, plus SU football host NC State. Full coverage of that. As for right now, Michael Benny returns with the nightcap next year on CBS 5.